Okay, um, I wanted to go through the questions that you sent me kind of carefully because um, I think there's a little, little bit of a nuanced answer for some of these. Okay, your first question is, um, what are the variables I am testing for normality? And this is a little bit of a tricky question because there's two ways to interpret it. On the one hand, um, we sometimes use hypothesis tests that require the test statistic to be normal or approximately normal. And that would be something like a t-test, okay? But that's not the normal usage of the word uh, a normality test. What most people mean, in my experience, when they're talking about a test for normality, they're testing to see if the random variable itself comes from a normal distribution. So we do this a lot with regression. Notice that when we do a hypothesis test, we never test to see if it's normal because we know that the test statistic under the central limit theorem is approximately normal when the sample sizes get half decently, half, half decently large. So when we're doing a hypothesis test, the sort of things that you were talking about as being possible answers, we're never testing for normality. We already know theoretically that the test statistic is at least approximately normal. And that's why this question kind of doesn't make sense in the context of how most people would look at it. So here's how I would answer it to, to make sure that you don't miss any points and, and you kind of cover all these bases, bases, <laughs> if you will. Um, I, I would say while we're not performing any normality tests to determine if a random variable in our study comes from a normal distribution, we are performing t-tests that use the fact that our test statistic comes from a t-distribution, which given a large sample size, which given the large sample size in this study, n greater than 70, is approximately normal. Okay? So we're not testing for normality because theoretically we already know that, but we're using a test that uses the normality of the test statistic and I think you want to give an answer like that just to make sure that you're not missing anything, okay? Because it's really unclear, at least to me, what what they're talking about. And so um, this way you can cover both of your bases and you don't have to worry. Okay. Um, for part two, whoops. You know, it says, um, uh, what normality tests am I using? Uh, what I would do is I would, you know, refer to the answer above. So I would say, given the answer to the previous question, the normality test, i.e., hypothesis test that uses the fact that the test statistic for large samples is by the central limit theorem approximately normal, we would be using would be an unpaired t-test. Okay? So I would, again, kind of qualify it with that caveat. Now, as far as chi-squared, chi-squared it'd be a little careful, but normally chi-squared is never a test for normality because generally chi-squared is looking at categorical variables. And even though you have to be a little careful, a chi-squared can be thought as thought of as the sum of squared normal random variables. This is really going, to me, way off the track to answer this question. Okay, so usually chi-squared refers to categorical data. And for categorical data, it's never normal, right? Because categorical data are just labels or identifiers. You can't take the mean or the standard deviation or anything. So these, these are never scale, and therefore they can never be normal. Okay. So um, I think that's the right answer for that one. Okay. This is an interesting question, and we kind of touched on this before. So... You know, I, I googled summary score. I couldn't find summary scale. But I have an idea of what summary score is like. So let me kind of show you. Um, so here, what it, what it boils down to basically is a sort of situation where you're either looking at a bunch of questions on a psychological questionnaire that are going to evaluate something. For example, maybe you're you, whether or not you are a psychopath, okay, I can ask a bunch of, of questions um, that have rankings. 
like so for, for example the first question be I feel like hurting people never sometimes often always right that could go from one to four okay and I could ask a bunch of questions like that that all have rankings and then I could combine them and that's where the summary parts coming in it's kind of like an aggregate score it's in some sense kind of an average of all of those scores okay so if you go down here and you look at uh, summary scores it says you know summary scores combine many measures into one overall score okay even though the individual measures may address quite different aspects of quality and so to kind of go back to the psychological test you could you could get an overall measure for whether someone was a psychopath by looking at scores for example in a test and then scores from a psychologist observing them and then scores from how people who knew them ranked them and you'd combine all those measures even though they're different you could combine them into one overall score okay so you, so you're taking you're taking different measures of the same thing uh, well you're taking you, you're taking you're taking right different measures of the same thing and then you're kind of combining them into one number okay i don't think we're doing that and if you look again there, there are some other things that talk about this okay these are measurement scales the type we use in psychology and they talk about a summary score here and when you and when you google that that's kind of like and again it's a little hard to describe without you know really knowing the specifics but you know it's it's kind of like a so this is a 36 item patient reported survey of patient health okay so they're they're taking these 36 pieces of information about your health and then they're combining them okay so the SF 636 consists of eight scaled scores which are weighted sums of the questions in their section so again it's a little hard to explain exactly what it is um, precisely but I don't think we're doing that because simply taking averages is not the same as a summary score okay now we could do summary scores and and we suggested this like a long time ago in the very beginning we could take those different outcomes the patients had from the uh, endurance from the fatigue from other things and you could combine them into one score okay the problem is how to do that and there are ways and I can think of ways um, but I'm not an expert in it and we'd probably want to confirm or at least check with that statistician but but kind of long story short um, at least as far as summary scores go I would say the answer is is simply no okay and I you know I'm not sure about summary scale like I said I, I tried to look this up I couldn't find it um, but I have the same sort of idea that that something similar is going on because in psychology you know you often have these different scales and again summary suggests to me that you're combining these scales in some way and so again we're not doing that so I think that the answer to that is is almost surely no okay all right I hope that helped and if you have any questions just let me know